Hello friends, on behalf of NIST, we welcome you to the integrated session of pathology and surgery. In this, we will be discussing a case of GVRD. Me, myself, Dr. Kunal, I am Plato faculty at NIST, and with me today, I have Dr. Vidhi Putra, sir, who is a surgery faculty at NIST. Thank, Thank you, sir. For the Thank you, sir. Now, how we are going to proceed to this, uh, we will be giving you a case, and uh, the case states that a 45-year-old male, obese, a smoker, presents to the outpatient department in the hospital with mild upper abdominal pain and symptoms of an acid taste in the mouth, which is several times per day over the past two years. Now, his pain is worse after eating. He has taken treatment from various physicians in the recent past and used to take one tablet empty stomach before the breakfast in the morning. Now, what should be the next step in the clinical approach to this patient. Now the option states esophageal manometry, barium slur, swallow, upper GI endoscopy or 24 hour ambulatory pH monitor. So sir, if you get this case in the OPD, how will you proceed with this case sir? I personally feel that uh, in this particular case, he has clearly mentioned that patient is having upper abdominal story with acid taste coming into his mouth and he has already uh, taken treatment from the local physicians. Most likely, he would have taken PPIs, as uh, clearly mentioned, one tablet and the stomach in the morning before breakfast. Right. So, this upper abdominal pain can be related to the pathologies in the epigastric area, like we talk about gastritis, gastric ulcer, duodenal ulcer, or it may be something related to the acid story coming up into the esophagus, like we find in cases of GI. If we focus on this particular area, I would definitely like to know that where is the pathology, whether this pathology is in the lower esophagus or in the stomach or inside the duodenum. And if I want to see the site, then if we come back to the options here, Manometry is not going to tell me the correct site of pathology. Manometry is a pressure study. This would be useful in those situations where there would be changes in the pressure inside the esophagus. Like most often we find these changes in cases of traffic jam situations like uh, ecclesia cardia or maybe nutcracker esophagus, diffuse esophageal spasm and so on. Same story with barium swallow that this is the study of the esophagus and I want to have a look in the lower esophagus stomach and tube mode. So, upper GI endoscopy, this looks to be a wonderful option for me out of these given here. This can tell me the exact sign. Ambulatory pH monitoring and that to 24 hours. This is something which is gold standard for GI. But right now, in the given clinical scenario, I have to first find out where is the pathology, whether it is in the lower esophagus or the stomach or inside the tube now. So I cannot jump on to this 24 hour pH monitoring. I would have to go with this upper GI endoscope. In a brief review, if we see that all the acid related conditions, they generally present to us with epigastric pain, may be associated with regurgitation. And specifically for GRD, there is more of heartburn, that is retrosternal pain or discomfort. And in all these acid related conditions, our clinical approaches, we try to reduce the acid secretion so that even if it is itis or ulcer, it can heal with the conservative management. We modify the lifestyle, we give the PPIs, and that is generally the sufficient treatment for these acid-related conditions. But in this particular patient, the patient is not responding. The patient is coming to us again. Now, as per the recommended guidelines if we see, then as per the recommended guidelines, if the PPI fits, we are doing upper GI endoscopy. This is also the investigation of choice for GID, though the gold standard is 24 hour ambulatory pH monitor. When I am doing this endoscopy, I can find some problem in the lower esophagus or in the stomach or inside the duodenum. And depending on the location of the pathology, I am going to proceed forwards. For example, if I find some problem inside the stomach, I would like to take a biopsy from the ulcer site inside the stomach and biopsy from the antrum to rule out H. pylori. And the same story for duodenal ulcer, I have to take a biopsy from the antrum of the stomach to rule out 
H by H by the value. But suppose in this particular given situation, as acid paste is coming into the mouth, I may find something in the lower esophagus. Like I am finding changes in the mucus of the lower esophagus. If we try to see why we are finding this change in the lower esophagus as such due to acid. Now because of this, if we take a look at the normal anatomy, this is the acid story inside the stomach and this is the normal lower esophageal sphincter. We know that uh, the intra-abdominal esophagus and the esophagogastric angle, they do contribute in this physiological lower esophageal sphincter. And if we take a look at what is the normal scenario, when the food is going to come from the esophagus with the help of peristaltic movements, the lower esophageal sphincter will relax and go into the stomach. You can see this is the normal story. But if due to smoking, alcohol, tea, coffee or any other thing, obesity, if the LES gets damaged, then this acid is going to reflux into the lower esophagus. And this will result in heartburn or retrosternal discomfort. So that, that is what is happening to the patient also, right? He's presenting with the discomfort. Yeah. So I personally feel that I have seen the changes in the lower esophagus on endoscopy. So I should take a biopsy. And definitely, I would be sending this biopsy specimen to my dear, very close uh, colleague, friend, Kunal sir has to say on this biopsy. So this is the site basically from the lower esophagus where you have taken the biopsy from. Right, sir. So, sir, whenever a biopsy is coming to uh, the lab, uh, like we have to know the site first. Now, we are saying that it is from the esophagus the biopsy is coming. Normally, the esophagus looks like this, sir. Now, you can see very gentle looking cells. They are, you know, are, this is the lining of the esophagus, which we call as stratified squamous epithelium. Squamous cells are generally, wherever they are present, they are very gentle cells. Stratification means layering, sir. So, you can see, it's, you know, this layering of squamous cells which are there in the esophagus. Okay. And, uh, you know, sir, we know that, you know, uh, uh, any any place where there is no secretion happening. So, we have squamous epithelium generally over there. So, esophagus does not secrete anything. So, we are having squamous epithelium. Now, sir, the thing with the esophagus is, like, you know, we are suspecting that the reflux is coming up. And whenever there is a reflux which is happening, so the junction between the esophagus and the stomach, that is the squamous and columnar junction which we are having, that is the major area of our concern. True. True. So, in this thing, this is the normal uh, squamocolumnar junction which we are seeing, sir. Again, you can see that this side, you know, this, this particular place, you can see the stratification, sir. The yes. stratification is happening. This is the, you know, gentle, simple squamous cells. Now, here if you see at this particular area, sir, now these are the cells which are elongated cells, you can see, and the nucleus, this dark blue color thing which you are seeing, sir, these are the nucleus of these elongated cells. So, you know, I know that stomach has to secrete THCL. So stomach will be having columnar cells because it has to secrete something. So this particular part is from the stomach. These are the columnar cells. And this is from the esophagus, which are basically the squamous cells. This is how the normal FT junction looks like. Wonderful explanation of the squamous columnar junction <laughs> on histopathology. Great. Yeah. And so uh, mostly, uh, which we get uh, in the lab once uh, an esophageal biopsy comes to us, is this uh, esophagitis. Uh, this is the inflammation in the esophagus which we are having and uh, you can very well understand sir i mean you can see one thing is sure that it, is, it looks very blue yeah. normally when we saw the normal esophageal biopsy it was you know more pinkish but now it is more bluish so why it is more bluish sir all these you know uh, the blue dot which you are seeing sir, these are all inflammatory cells which have come in the stratified layer of the esophagus so whenever i see this i say that this is esophagitis why i'm not saying it is any other pathology because sir, i'm not seeing any mitotic figures here i'm not seeing a lot of different sizes of the nucleuses i mean they are same looking kind of cells which are there and they're abundant in number so they are basically your wbc so this is esophagitis now sir let's say that you know this is the diagnosis i've given you on the reports so what you're going to do for this patient right so if uh, there is so much of an inflammatory infiltrate here now, this is a case of esophagitis with GRD, right? In this particular patient, already conservative treatment has been tried, but the patient has not responded. Yeah. So, if this medical therapy is failing, then I have to go for some surgical intervention. I don't want reflux to occur. That means I want to strengthen this lower esophageal area. And how I can do this? I can just bring the fundus of the stomach, wrap it around the lower esophagus, 
and the different types of fundoplications can be done. Commonly, what we are doing is a floppy nascent fundoplication. So this is going to prevent the reflux of acid from the stomach into the esophagus. But sir, I mean, surgical intervention you'd only be doing if a patient is not responding to the PPI. Yeah, right, sir. Definitely. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so this is the basic scenario which we can have. Now, let's imagine such a second scenario which is of great concern for uh, for us and for the students as well because it gets a lot of questions in the exam. And that is uh, this, sir, the Barrett's esophagus. Now, again, if you see, look at this Barrett's sir, this, you know, you are seeing three different things here. How I'm saying this. So, this area, in this area, again, sir, the stratification is seen. Very gentle, simple cells, yeah. either the squamous cells or the esophagus. Right. If you see at this area, sir, Again, you know, this row of cells which you are seeing, these are all elongated cells which are having nucleus at the base. And why we have, to, what are these cells called as? These are columnar cells. So we understand that this is a, this is a place where the secretion is happening. It is a stomach. stomach. But sir, this thing, you know, you might say, Ki bhai, ye normal hai. but this is not normal, sir. This thing we are not finding normally at the ST junction. We do not find it from this biopsy. So what is this? This is, you know, all these white areas which you are seeing, yes, or empty areas. Yeah. These are actually the goblet cells. And as soon as we say goblet cells, I mean, everyone understand, you know, a goblet cell here in the esophagus, it's a whole lot story of Barrett's. Why? Because goblet cells are generally, we are not having in the esophagus. We are not having in the stomach. We are having in the intestine. So that is why, sir, Barrett's is also called as intestinal metaplasia. Yeah. That something from the intestine has come to the esophagus. Now, sir, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, just have a good look at the goblets. So these, these cells, you know, so all yeah. these cells, these are all goblet cells, all my feature of Barrett's esophagus, and they are producing mucin. I hope the students would take care of these uh, hallmark goblet cells inside the esophagus in Barrett's. Yeah. So let's say, sir, this is uh, the diagnosis which uh, we have made. Uh, what has to be done uh, for this patient, sir? Because, sir, I mean, with Barrett's, we understand that, you know, this, sir, this is a metaplasia which is happening. But then, sir, metaplasia can go into dysplasia. And then this dysplasia can further go into anaplasia. So, let's say, sir, I'm saying it's a low-grade dysplasia, which I'm seeing with Barrett's. What you want, sir? So, now I have got a report of low-grade dysplasia with Barrett's, Barrett's in the lower esophagus. The current recommendations are that we should remove this uh, dysplastic mucosa in the lower esophagus, even if it's a low-grade dysplasia. Earlier, the recommendations were that for low-grade dysplasias, we were going ahead with PPI treatment. But now, even low-grade dysplasias have been found to get converted to moderate and high-grade dysplasias. So, we should not leave this. The best thing, minimal intervention, we can do an endoscopic mucosal resection of the dysplastic areas followed by radiofrequency ablation and PPIs. Like we can see how we can do a radiofrequency ablation here and we can destroy this dysplastic mucosa. However, laser, photodynamic therapy, argon beam plasma coagulation, all these have been tried. But the recommended guidelines, endoscopic mucosal resection, followed by RFA and PPIs. So, so things to note is that, you know, even with low dysplasia, you will go with the yeah. intervention. Yeah. So, sir, uh, let's say, sir, the third possibility, which is not a good thing, but still, if we are getting it, that is, uh, sir, the cancer which is happening in the esophagus because of the Barrett's. Like, you know, Barrett's happened, the metaplasia happened, it went into dysplasia, and then from dysplasia, it went into anaplasia. That means the cancer has happened now. And now I'm saying that, you know, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus is happening. Okay. Now, sir, uh, whenever I'm using the word adeno, that means that, you know, I'm talking about the gland. Yeah. Now, I'm writing it adenocarcinoma esophagus. Now, we know that, you know, esophagus does not have glands. It has a plain squamous epithelium. But now, I'm saying that, you know, I am finding glands in the esophagus. And these glands, you can see, there's so many glands there in the esophagus. If we just recall the image which we have seen for a normal esophagus, we had layering of gentle squamous cells. But now, we are finding so much of glands. And that too, we are seeing high mitotic figures you know, extreme pleomorphism and, uh, you know, this, this is not a normal esophageal biopsy because of so much of glands. I would say that this is an adenocarcinoma esophagus. Now, it's a very uh, bad situation, but let's say that if the patient ends up here, then what would be the recommended? No, Kunal sir, if you have given me the report of this adenocarcinoma, then yes, uh, before I offer any treatment to this patient, I would like to stage this disease first. 
I can go with the endoscopic uh, ultrasound, mm -hmm. transluminal ultrasonography, just to uh, know the depth of uh, involvement of this tumor. I will be doing a CECT and a PET scan to see how far this cancer has spread. Once this is done, I would be able to do a proper staging. And depending on the staging, I would be able to plan whether I can offer a curative treatment to this patient or I'll have to go with the palliative treatment. So that's it from our, uh, from our side, guys. I hope uh, that it helped you. Good luck from our side.